In the past several sections of chapter 3, we've been working to develop shortcut rules for taking derivatives of different functions. But as I state here in this opening motivation, thus far in all those sections, we dealt with functions where y is a function of x. So we had some sort of a formula where it was like y equals a bunch of stuff with x. So by definition, when we say that y is a function of x, remember what that means graphically. That would mean that for each x value, that's in the domain of the actual graph, um, we could say that there is a unique y value. And if something doesn't satisfy this condition, then we uh, say that it is not a function. So what's interesting is that if I take a look, say, at like the graphs that I have down here, I can very quickly and easily see that these are not functions. And I can test for this by um, doing something like the vertical line test. Remember, if I do a vertical line test, and I see that I hit the graph at multiple points, and that means that there is an x value that can produce multiple different y values on the graph, and so I do not have a function. Over here, I can see that there might be even three different values of y that can be produced by a single x. But what's interesting is that we can definitely see that if these curves are not functions, they still can be thought of as having tangent lines on them at different points, right? Like I can draw a tangent line right here on each of these different curves. And so maybe I'm still interested in being able to find the slopes of those particular tangent lines. However, this is going to be in particular um, very difficult to do because again, these curves are not functions. And in the way that we've defined the derivative thus far, a derivative was something that we could find for functions. We were able to find the derivative of something like y equals x squared. We were able to find the derivative of something like y equals square root of x. But how do we find the derivative of uh, curves that have these kind of complicated sorts of uh, equations. These equations are typically what we call implicit equations. And we'll define a little bit about what implicit versus explicit equations are in the definitions here. So an implicit equation is an equation in which one variable is not defined in terms of the other variable. So like these equations up here, you can see that I don't just have one variable equals a whole bunch of stuff with the other variable. I kind of have variables mixed together on one or both sides of the equation. So this is, an, again, an implicit equation. Now, an explicit equation is an equation in which one variable actually is defined in terms of the other variable. And so an explicit equation, by definition, is a function. So let's just take a look really quickly here at something like example one, and we should hopefully be able to sort out these definitions here rather quickly. So um, down here, I want to determine whether each of the following uh, curves is going to represent an implicit or an explicit equation. Well, if I take a look here at the first one, I'll notice that I have y, a single variable, and it's equal to a bunch of stuff with only the other variable of x. And so by definition, this would be an explicit equation. So this is an explicit equation. I have only one variable defined in terms of the other, and therefore, this is a function. This is a function. OK, great. Um, now, down here on this one, I'll notice that in its current form, uh, I have x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So I don't have one variable being set equal to a whole bunch of stuff with the other variable. So I would have to state that this is an implicit equation, since y, again, is not solved in terms of x. Now, what's kind of strange is the way that these titles get applied um, does not take into consideration if I could possibly rewrite something to make it implicit or explicit. So like, if I was to take a look up here at part a, imagine that if I just simply rewrote this as y plus e to the x equals the sine of x. 
hopefully you would agree this is ultimately like the same equation. I've just added e to the x to the other side. But now this would be implicit. Even though with a simple algebraic move, I could switch it back to being an explicit equation. So there is some sort of kind of uh, manipulation of these definitions that or manipulation of the equations that can be done to quickly and easily change from something that is a function to something that is not a function. So what we're going to start to see is what exactly are we going to do when we take a look at implicit equations. Again, the title for this section is to understand how we actually work with doing implicit differentiation. That is, how do we find the derivative or the slopes of tangent lines on curves where I cannot solve for y in a single equation, or maybe uh, it's rather difficult to do that. So we'll take a look at at least um, how exactly we start to plan to do that in the next video.